uh, the Chief Minister pointed out this evening that marks each of the 20 Devis that are present here. Uh, before they come up to accept their uh, awards, as I mentioned earlier, in an alphabetical order, can I request you all to come in from the left, my left of the stage, which means your right of the stage, to accept them from uh, the Chief Minister and then come up to me at the podium so we can share a few ideas as well. Uh, first off the list, Anju Modi, textile and craft revivalist, fashion and costume designer. She gets the, this award for breathing magic into textile. No gimmicks, no glitter, plenty of chutzpah. This is a designer who pairs saris with army jackets and tucks pallus into epaulets with as much elan as she reinterprets Sanganeri prints or reworks Khadi. Anju Modi has been weaving magic into fabric since 1990 when she launched a fashion label with no training. A founding member of FTCI, she delights in preserving traditional fabrics and textures as much as in creating fusion silhouettes for the contemporary woman's wardrobe. Uh, so, Anju, one question for you. Yes. What are the elements that constitute an Indian identity in contemporary fashion? Well, I think uh, the genesis of any fashion garment is fabric and textile. And uh, that is the core of the design ideas. And I think in my early days of my career, I started tackling this. And uh, I'm glad that I'm being honored for this uh, work of mine and it is giving me further inspiration and energy and it's a mammoth task of course to revive the history of our country to preserve it to you know give them new ideas contemporary ideas and carry on giving them the economic uh, you know relief sustenance and they have become the, all the family like Kashmir to Kanyakumari and I would say like from Dwarka to Puri I have traveled everywhere and that is one huge satisfaction in myself that I've managed to give them good. Uh, so before you leave, one last question. Yes. Who's the one person amidst your fellow awardees on those two tables there that you'd like to dress and why? <laughs> well, I, mean, I would why say Mrs. No, all of them are beautifully dressed, and I would like to dress Mrs. Sindhya herself. <laughs> she is a great, um, you know, like personality she has, and I would love to gift her a beautiful woven handloom sari. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Coming up next, Anu Malhotra, filmmaker, screenwriter, and now artist. She gets the award for viewing the world through multiple lenses. With Anu Malhotra, less is more. She's eye-catching enough to be in front of the camera, but has made her life behind it. She gave India its first travel shows, Namaste India and Indian Holiday, and much of the incredible India campaign. Passionate about the old beliefs and practices of Indian subcultures, she has made documentaries on the Apatani of Arunachal Pradesh, the Konyak of Nagaland, and the Shamans of the Himalayas besides a riveting biodrama on the Maharaja of Jodhpur. And now the erstwhile wild child, biker and photographer has turned full-time painter. She showed a collection of giant drunk on color acrylics in Delhi earlier this year. Anu, coming up for you. You flirted with your career choices as a documentary filmmaker, television producer, photographer and artist. Are you commitment phobic? <laughs> well, I've been married for 25 years. All right, so, that's your personal <laughs> life. Um, yeah, that's true, actually. Um, I get bored easily, so I um, like to experiment. All right, that's exciting. As a woman, if you had the choice to live in any century, which would that be? A little bit in all of them, I think because uh, through my documentaries, I actually visit so many centuries. You know, when I was in Nagaland, it was like going back 20,000 years. When I was in Jodhpur, it was like going back 500 years. With the shamans, you know, it was going back, I don't know how many, thousands of years. So through my work, I actually have lived in many centuries. Thank you, that was wonderful, thank you. I'll take that mic now.
Thank you. Coming up next, Bina Lakshmi Nepram, founder Manipur Gun Survivors Network. She gets this award for disarming mankind. Bina Lakshmi Nepram witnessed a massacre at the age of 13 and decided to speak up against violence. In 2004, she founded the Control Arms Foundation of India, India's first civil society organization working on conventional disarmament issues. In 2007, in order to help thousands of women affected by gun violence in Manipur, she started the Manipur Gun Survivors Network. In 2006, Bina was awarded the Dalai Lama Foundation's Wiscomp Scholar of Peace Award given to women working on conflict resolutions and peace processes and completed work on women and micro disarmament issues. Can I have you here, please? Uh, in a world of violence, Pina Lakshmi, why is it left to women to resolve conflict? Because as the Rajasthan chief minister also said, men own 99% of the earth and they do all the wars and the manufacturing of weapons in the world. So that is why it is left to women like us and I dedicate this award to all the women in the northeast of India and strong women of India who have stood up, women like Irum Sharmila, the Mayra Paivis, and myself and all others to do this work which the men have failed to do. So, Bina Lakshmi, before you go, is there anything men do better than women? <laughs> they have to keep loving us. <laughs> yes. It's a world of togetherness. And they have to keep loving us, respecting us, and allow us to have the dignity, the respect that they have denied us for centuries. India will take a hundred more years. Please treat the women with respect that we deserve, whether we are from the Northeast or from Rajasthan. I think we can be the change that India needs. Thank you so much. I think that re requires a huge hand of applause. Thank you so much, Pina Lakshmi. Coming up next, I have Jayashree Barman, contemporary artist, who is being awarded for celebrating women through art. She believes in creating positive energy through her art and turns to nature for inspiration. If once Jayashree's work had a tranquil, sanguine feel to it, now her vehicle of expression is a dance of color. Big or small, her paintings and sculptures establish an intimate space like a secret garden and invite the viewer to step in. Her paintings have been part of important exhibitions in India and abroad. Do join me, please, Jayashree. I can only paint. <laughs> no, just very briefly. As an artist working at a time when contemporary art is all the buzzword, how do you define your own work? As a contemporary artist working now, when contemporary art has such a huge buzz, how do you define your art? I think my art is also very much contemporary. People sometimes ask this kind of questions because it's very traditional. And as I am a woman, I'm from India, and I feel that I should uh, sh show more women paintings because it's very important and give them a lot of importance and we nurture them uh, nicely and uh, then the future will be more beautiful and healthy. So, and that's the thing, and uh, I think that's very, very much contemporary. If I don't do like this painting, it's not correct. So, Jeshri, as a wife and, an, and as an artist, what advice would you have for your husband and fellow artist, Paresh Maithi, who's also in the audience? Just as usual, love me and be all the time beside me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, can we have Jyotsna Suri, please, Chairman and Managing Director of the Lalit Suri Hospitality Group, who gets this award for taking India to the world. Snatching strength from the jaws of sorrow, Jyotsna Suri took on her husband's mantle as chair of the Lalit Suri Hospitality Group after losing him suddenly. Under her leadership, the company has become the largest privately owned hotel chain in India. But her concerns don't stop there. 
Determined to develop destinations and not just hotels, she has become a brand ambassador for India. She takes pride in promoting Indian tourism through events like the Polo Tournament in Dras, the Shikarathon in Sh Srinagar, ice hockey in Leh, and the Tipaiyathon in Khajuraho. A big hand of applause for Josna Suri, please. Could I have you? So, Mrs. Suri, in your perception, do people come to destinations, experiences, or resorts to get away from it all? Uh, they come for experiences. Of course, they come to get away from it all, but if we give them an experience, then it just adds that much value to their, to their vacation. Uh, can I also ask you, do women understand hospitality better than men? Most certainly. <laughs> well done. Briefly said, thank you so much. Kalyani Chavla, Vice President, Marketing and Communications, Dior Couture, India. Kalyani gets this for making luxury a household name. This is a lady with two obsessions, her job and her daughter. The first has ensured that she's taken an alien luxury brand out of its la -di -da showrooms and into people's psyches. She's brought Bollywood, the media, and India's A-listers together in the cause of her brand and replaced the sari with the gown on Indian red carpets. As a single mother, she's worked tirelessly and ensured that her child doesn't know the meaning of I can't. Well done, Kalyani. Can I have you with me, please? Luxury has become an overused and abused term in our time. How would you define luxury? I think we Indians are intrinsically used to a certain amount of luxury which no other, um, you know, luxury of our daily lives. You know, the fact that we have certain comforts and we as Indians, um, I'm not talking about luxury goods as such or, uh, you know, uh, historically I think, we have through the royal families. Uh, we know what lux we are luxury uh, purveyors, of course. But the comfort that we have in India is unaffordable in many parts of the world. And you know what we are talking about. Absolutely. So. It's what we experience every yeah. day. So three hours in a spa or three hours of binge shopping, what would you choose? I wish I had time for one of the two. Uh, I don't. But... Um, I think uh, time spent with my spa, spa, spa. <laughs> yes, spa, spa, spa. <laughs> my biggest luxury is, I think, spending time with my daughter. Um, it's my biggest joy. Um, this is for you, Tahira. She's in boarding school, well really far away. And uh, my biggest motivation and my sanity. Though I, I'm not sure she's turned into an alien since she's turned into yeah, a that's teenager. Troublesome. <laughs> that's troublesome. But good luck to you and thank you so much, Kalyani. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. Um, my pleasure to request Leela Sait, first woman Chief Justice of a High Court, Himachal Pradesh, to join us, please. She gets this award for upholding justice. Leela Sait has many firsts to her name. We don't want a woman's opinion, they told her, when she started out as a young lawyer. But Leela Seth was having none of it. She went on to become the first woman chief justice of a high court, as well as the first woman judge of Delhi court. The whole court had to bow to her opinion. Mrs. Seth has been the chair of the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative for several years and feels that social action litigation should be aimed at providing a decent standard of living for the poor and working people. Now she does arbitration work and writes books, including a book for children on the preamble to the Indian Constitution, Constitution titled, We, the Children of India. <laughs> Mrs. Sait, my question to you, is there a difference between men and women and how they conduct business in the chair as Chief Justice? There's a big difference between men and women. And I think that women are much more understanding of situations. I was a chief justice and the others were all men. I was the woman and I knew that I had not to hurt their sensibilities. 
and I handled it in the way that women handle at home with their children, with their husbands, and with their family. I never let them feel small. Always I asked for their opinions, and then if, they, if I agreed with it, I went along. If I didn't agree with it, I was firm and decided to do the right thing. So I think women need to have a much better thing. Beautifully said. Uh, what do you love about being a woman? I love being a woman because I, I love being spoiled and pampered. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, I can wear beautiful clothes. I love being a woman because I'm a mother. And I love being a woman because I have a wonderful husband who takes very good care of me. So I love all those things about being a woman. So I love the men and I love myself. And I'm happy if everybody is equal. That's what I want. I don't want to walk one step ahead. I want to walk side by side. That's Thank it. you so much, Mr. Sage. Thank you very much. Uh, coming up next, Manju Bhatia, Joint Managing Director, Vasuli Recovery. She gets this award for Hustle Without Muscle. Manju Bhatia proves that there's nothing called a man's job. At age 17, she realized that loan recovery by banks needed good communication skills, not muscle power. Others scoffed at her career choice, but Manju soldiered on with her Vasuli. Now 28, the small indoor-based loan recovery company has 25 branches and does rupees 5,000 crore of recovery for 20 nationalized banks. Well done. She so, recovers money from men. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so Manju, this question is for you. What did it take to prove yourself as a woman doing a man's job? Pardon me? What did it take to prove yourself yes. as a woman doing a man's job? Uh, see, basically, all we women, whatever we do, we put our heart into it. And if we determine, uh, if we are determined in doing something, we never go back. We are go-getters. So if, if once a woman decides she has to do it, nothing can stop her. So that has probably distinguished us from men. Making us feel like an endangered species. <laughs> What's the one thing you turn to a man to do for you? What is the one thing? You turn to a man to do for you. Do for you. Do for me. Open a ketchup bottle. <laughs> probably, probably stand beside me. That's all they could do. Yeah, that's all. I told you we were an endangered species. Thank you so yeah. much. A big round of applause for Manju, please. Yeah, actually, uh, there's one more thing Madam uh, uh, suggested me to say here on this platform. So uh, basically, we are a group of 200 women recovering the bad debts of all nationalized banks, government banks. So uh, we are the ones who do not use goons. When you think of uh, recovery, what you think is gunde are But then if somebody of us comes, I'm sure you'll be convinced that recovery agents are not goons <laughs> and the gundas here. And this award is not only for me today, it's for every woman who has uh, distinguished, you know, has done, ach achieved something. And especially for every woman of my company who has been a part of a Suli group, who was, who is, and who will be with us. So this is com completely for my company. It's, 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 I'm, I'm just a representative, but all the women together, it's our success. Thank you. Thank you, Manju Bhatia. Thank you so much. Coming up next, Neeti Palta, stand-up comic. She gets this award for lightening the load. The rest of her sex may be content with glaring at male stand-up comics hurling sexist jokes. Neeti Palta wasn't happy till she got up on stage and mashed them line for line. She's been voted best stand-up comic at the OzFest and was India's first stand-up comic to perform at the Melbourne Comedy Festival 2013. The founder of Looney Goons, which keeps corporate houses entertained, Neeti was also head writer at Sesame Street's Indian venture, Gali Gali Sim Sim. Neeti, how difficult is it to stand before an audience and make them laugh? I don't think it's that tough because I know I'm good, so if they don't laugh, it's them. Okay, do you have a signature line? Um, I don't think I can say it here. However, I will like to share something since we were discussing toilets. You do know that Modiji's first directive, one of his first directives was, he said he's going to start charging, uh, or rather, let's just say, he's going to start fining men 100 bucks for peeing in public. You know about this, right? But do you think that's going to fix the problem? Tell me honestly, do you? Exactly. So just think about it. 
we have a population of 1.22 billion people out of which at least 60% are men out of which at least 40% pee outdoors <laughs> despite having the maximum number of toilets so think about the amount of money the government stands to make if the middle east is an economy fueled by oil india is going to be an economy <laughs> well done well said thank you so much nidhi palter neha kirpal founder india art fair she gets this award for bringing art to people at the age of 34 not too many women can say i had a dream and i realized it but neha kirpal is the founder and fair director of india art fair which she started in 2008 is more than qualified to do so her creation has ripped the world of art of its exclusionary pretenses and given it to the people she has made it possible for 300000 ordinary people to see the best of art from across the world over the last 6 years and given artists a platform that they could earlier only dream of so neha how does being the face of indian art around the world make you feel and what has been your greatest learning from the fair responsible um especially because i started when i was a a backpacking kid at 25 wanting to move back to my country and do something that makes an impact uh so certainly responsible very very proud of the fact that this country has proven that we can produce something that is truly world class we don't have to be apologetic for being third world in terms of what we produce both in terms of the art as well as you know the quality of of the event itself so i'm i'm actually very very proud of the fact that that india is now on the international world map and it's only because everybody has owned a piece of it and made it happen together so very grateful so same degree of honesty is there a lot of bullshit being passed off as art there's bullshit in everything at least in art you can see it and appreciate it for what it is and call it what it is <laughs> thank you so much thank you prem lata agarwal mountain climber she gets this award for scaling new heights the jamshedpur based housewife wanted her daughters to take up outdoor activities and ended up climbing the everest instead at the age of 48 last year after climbing the mckinley peak in antarctica she became the first indian woman to scale the seven summits which are the top peaks of all the seven continents It's not just mountains that challenge her. Prem Lata has also participated in the first Indian women's Thar, women's Thar desert expedition in 2007, a 40-day camel safari from Bhuj to the Vaga border. In 2013, Prem Lata was awarded the Padma Shri for her achievements in mountaineering. A big applause for her, ladies and gentlemen. Um, did your daughters follow in your footsteps? Did your daughters actually uh, start the outdoor activities that you started your mountain climbing with? Yeah, पहले तो बेटी के साथ ही start किया था, लेकिन फिर बेटी तो इस study में पहले study complete की, फिर बेटी के शादी के बाद मैंने Mount Everest climb किया. Mountain climbing में सबसे मुश्किल चीज़ क्या है? जब लक्ष्य हो तो कुछ भी मुश्किल नहीं है वेल सेड वेल सेड थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू प्रेम लता प्रिया पॉल चेयरपर्सन ऑफ एपीजे सुरेंद्र पार्क होटल्स शी गेट्स दिस अवार्ड फॉर रीडिफाइनिंग हॉस्पिटैलिटी प्रिया पॉल्स लव ऑफ आर्ट एंड डिजाइन डिफाइंस हर एज मच एज द 10 होटल्स शी रन्स हु एल्स वुड क्रिएट एन आर्ट कांसेप्ट होटल ऑन द प्रेमिसेस ऑफ अ फिल्म स्टूडियो Priya Paul is a trustee of the Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts and board member of the National Council of Science Museums. A second generation hotelier, she is an executive committee member of the Hotel Association of India and a founder member and former chair of World Travel and Tourism Council's India chapter. She was awarded the Padma Shri in 2012 and the insignia of the National Order of Merit by France in 2014. A big applause for Priya Paul. Priya can clever design replace luxury in the hospitality business. 
clever de design is true luxury, isn't it? <laughs> All right, okay. I'm stumped. <laughs> so this one for you. Can a hotel ever be a home? Well, I'm lucky that uh, they are, because I think when you, um, uh, when you create a hotel environment, you do create something that's of comfort and uh, pleasure. And there are many people who uh, consider hotels their home. That's they do, good. I do. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Priya. Rebecca Mammon John, Senior Counsel, Delhi High Court. She gets this for always mounting the best defense. As a criminal lawyer, Rebecca Mammon John doesn't have to like all her clients, but she has to do her darndest to get them a fair hearing. And that is exactly what the Senior Counsel does, boosted by the belief that everyone has the right to be defended. Her clients range from the famous and the powerful to poor under trials whom she works for pro bono. The one constant is her attitude to the death penalty. She opposes it with all her heart and believes it's the certainty of punishment that matters, not the severity. Big round of applause for her, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Rebecca, does the misuse of power and justice trouble you? Always. It troubles me always. There's a lot of misuse, particularly in the judiciary, and it's a matter of deep, deep concern. What do Indians lie about most frequently? Indians are chronic liars. <laughs> always. They lie to us as counsels. They lie in court. They lie, in, they lie on affidavits. We don't believe in the truth. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Of hearts. When she joined medicine in the 80s, there was a lack of treatment options in India, and patients would go abroad for heart treatment, whether they could afford it or not. That made her even more determined to do her bit to provide good cardiac care to Indians in India. Yes, she gets emotional about patients sometimes, but says that makes her vulnerable, but also more caring. Big round of applause for her, Dr. Rupa Salwan. Dr. Rupa Salvan, for you, how scared ought we be of a cardiac epidemic striking our lifestyles in society? Uh, I don't think we should be scared of it. We should just face it. And if the West took 50 years to overcome this problem, once we are aware of it, we follow good lifestyle habits, I don't think we should take that long to overcome this epidemic. So what happened between 1960 and 2000 in the West, we should not take more than five or ten years if we are determined to control this epidemic. So does love keep hearts young or healthy or both or neither? Love runs life. It keeps the hearts healthy. It keeps us all alive. And what would all, any of us be without love? Well said. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Rupa Salvan. Sairi Chahel, founder, she rose. She gets this for putting woman power in offices. A mother isn't just a mother. A wife isn't just a wife. For Sairi Chahel, women are more than their domestic duties. Her venture, Flexi Moms, has changed the working woman's ecosystem and read on work life design. Earlier this year, she started She Rose, India's first large format opportunity scape for women. Her company offers online mentorship and career resources to thousands of women in search of flexible jobs. A big round of applause for her. So, Sairid, tell us a little about Flexi Jobs for Flexi Moms. Actually, we are called Shiro's now. We started as a returning professionals platform because India produces the maximum number of women graduates in the world. And we also have the lowest number of women in workforce, which is about 17% or 22%, depending on what, how you look at data, which means there, there is a latent talent, talent potential out there for us. So we started as a returning professionals platform, but then we figured the career conversation needs to be opened up. We need to start talking to women about their careers, about their choices, about asking for help, about supportive networks, about communities when they are in college and not when they have sort of dawdled their way into midlife, breaking off their career path or not having to work. So we set up this platform called Shiro's, which is an online platform, reaches women all over India, and we offer online mentorship, career resources, but we also work with companies to say, 
you should put every single opportunity you have, whether you have a corporate job, whether you have a part-time job, whether you have an entrepreneurial opportunity, you want to do reseller program, get women to look at it exclusively and you will automatically invite applications from women who are, who are bound to look at these opportunities because it's built for them, this networks for them and the supports for them. Thank you. Would you do the same for men? Uh, I will do the same for men provided men start sharing the caregiving responsibilities as much. <laughs> well said. Thank you so much, Sari. Sampat Meena, Inspector General, Organized Crime, Ranchi. She gets this for keeping women safe. The best man for the job can be a woman, especially if the woman has the stature and strength of Sampat Meena. This IG believes in social policing over traditional policing. Women and children are of special interest to her, and she works with NGOs and, and international organizations like UNICEF to fight human trafficking and physical abuse. She has also served in the Naxal areas. Yes, there is danger, but you have to be brave, she says, if only men were that strong. Big round of applause for Sampat Meena, please. Sampat Meena, question for you. Why are women being targeted more as objects of violence? Uh, I guess it's the mindset which we need to change. Are men scared of you? Uh, they are. <laughs> well done. Well said. Thank you so much. Thank you. Savita Punde. I don't want to ask why. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Obviously, Dawn's no. Savita Punde, landscape architect, co founder, design cell. She gets us for creating green vistas. Even in concrete jungles, Savita Punde sees scope for greenery. The co founder of Design Cell specializes in landscape so that city sl slickers don't lose touch with nature. From Bangalore and Mumbai to Kuwait, Dubai, and New York, she has left a trail of green everywhere. As one of the founders of the School of Environment and Architecture, she has taken the science out of its compartmentalized restraint and made it multidisciplinary. Can we have a round of applause for her, please? My question to you, Savitha. Uh, is there a solution for our cities increasingly starved of green spaces? Yes, of course. There are always solutions and we um, need to have the willpower and the will to do it. How would you do it? Um, I would say by when we are uh, looking at our planning, especially now that we have a new government and we have new hope, to build in as many ecological principles as we can into our planning. Sabitha, when was the last time you climbed a tree? Many years ago. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm sure that would be the response for many in this room uh, tonight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Sonam Kalra, founder of the Sufi Gospel Project. She gets this for putting a song in our hearts. In music, there is worship, there is God. Through the medium of Sufism, Sonam Kalra connects with the wider world as well as the world within. Her Sufi Gospel Project, in collaboration with Delhi's finest musical talent, has moved audiences in Delhi and Jodhpur, as well as Muscat in Toronto. The warm tonal quality of her voice can be heard in voiceovers on Discovery Travel and Living, as well as on Indigo Plains. And though lots went wrong at the Delhi Commonwealth Games, the presenter of the opening ceremony came out tops. A big round of applause, please. <clears throat> You know, wow. this is more nerve-wracking than singing in front of 20,000 people. Wow. <laughs> this is a small group. Yes. So are the young in India disconnected with their heritage of music and dance? No, actually. And I have to say that one of the things for me, when I created the Sufi Gospel Project and I presented, to my mind, a new interpretation of Sufism, was that I trusted my audience and I gave them credit. I I realize that people are much more intelligent than we give them credit for, and people receive things well. So I think our youth has the same um, connect with music, and they're very proud of being Indian. At least all the audiences we've presented to, I have to say how much they love it and how touched they are. So I have great hope for India. I have great hope for our youth as well. 
What's your favorite Sufi anthem? My favorite Sufi anthem. My favorite Sufi anthem. You'll have to hum it for us. I'm not going to do that no, because no. you didn't ask the criminal lawyer to perform her duties or ask someone to climb a tree. No, that's not fair. But I am nicely. going to say, I know that Sufi anthem is strangely enough John Lennon's Imagine because it talks of a world without borders, a world where there is no religion. Um, but I'd like to say that I want to dedicate this award to my wonderful parents who are not here anymore. They, they are my soul. They are in me to my husband who's very supportive and to all the wonderful women. My God, I'm, I feel so blessed to be receiving this honor with all of you. You are such incredible women and you do such amazing work. And I hope through our collective voices and through the collective voices of everyone in this room, we can change the world. We can make it a better place. We can make it a freer place for our women and a safer place for our children. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very well said, Sonam. Thank you. Uh, Shuchi Mukherjee, founder Limeroad.com. She gets this for selling cyber happiness. Shuchi Mukherjee proves that if a woman cannot find what she wants, she will invent it. That's what she did with Lime Road, her shopping portal for women. A charming example of world-class logistics and infrastructural framework. She calls it the digital age equivalent of the 16th century Grand Trunk Road. A Cambridge Commonwealth scholar and a British evening scholar, Shuchi has put 18 years of her management experience to hit the Lime Road running. Welcome and a big round of applause. So Shuchi, what's new about another shopping portal? Well, we're transforming lives. Um, I'll tell you, we work with vendors who have absolutely no reach in the Indian retail world. And uh, we've hit history by creating vendor millionaires. So uh, vendors who had no history of retailing in India have started earning more than 10 lakhs of rupees in less than 60 days on Lime Road. We're creating history by giving women a platform to create looks. There are girls outside of Jharkhand whose parents would never let them get to Patna, but they use Lime Road to actually create scrapbook looks, present what looks people should wear, and they say this, ye mera tarika hai patna se nikal, apne ghar se nikal ke patna nahi chennai tak pochne ka. So uh, we're transforming lives. It's not just a shopping platform, we're transforming Indian retail. Shushi, what's the last thing you shopped for and where? Uh, always Lime Road, and I bought my mother a sari. <laughs> well done, thank you so much. Uh, our last recipient this evening, Vijay Lakshmi Ravindranath, Chairperson, Center for Neuroscience, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. She gets this for keeping brains ticking. First, invest in basic science, then learn to innovate, says the Chairperson of the Center for Neuroscience, Vijay Lakshmi Ravindranath. She is focused on understanding the pathogenic mechanisms underlying the neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases in, in order to discover drug targets that can be used to develop new therapies. She wishes to make science gender friendly so women can continue research even after completing their PhDs. Her consistent contribution to scientific research was recognized with the Padma Shri in 2010. Vijay Lakshmi. My question to you, how is the nuclear, sorry, how is the nuclear family coping with neuro, neurodegenerative disorders? Very badly, as can be expected. And why do you say that? Well, the lifespan is increasing. Developing countries are going to have the largest increase in patients with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And we just don't have the public health system or the family support anymore which is tragic. How forgetful are you? What I want to forget, I forget. What I don't <laughs> want to forget, I don't. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's been wonderful. Uh, a big hand of applause for the 20 Devis. Everyone in this room, please put your hands together. Can I have the 20 Devis up on stage for a group photograph, please? All 20 of you, can you join us back here on the stage?
I'm surprised no one's taking selfies. Twenty women who represent merit and excellence. Come on, guys, give them a big hand.